Because I simply could not bring myself to publish a 20 minute video that talks about why armor is the best thing to roll in your gear. Um, I'm sorry to say that I think the best in slot video guide for the 1.4, the 1.5, or the 1.6 patch is simply not going to happen. Um, at least until Massive balances out the armor rolls on gear and it is no longer such a must have stat anymore. But just because we cannot talk about stat rolls on gear, that doesn't mean that we have to abandon the rest of the game as well, because something that I've been getting a lot of questions about are the weapons and the weapon mods. Uh, you know, more specifically, how do I mod my weapons? What are the good rolls on weapon mods? And of course, why are some rolls better than others? Um, so what I'm bringing you today is a full guide on how to mod your assault rifle. Why the assault rifle, you ask? Well, that is because assault rifles are pretty strong this patch, and that is what most people will be using. But also, another reason, and this is probably a little more important, is if I were to do this for every single weapon archetype in the game, in one video, the video would literally be more than an hour long, which is just way too long. And also, one more thing, I'm not really sure how useful you guys will find a video like this, so this is a, a test episode, so to speak. Now, as always, for those that do not want to sit through what is probably still going to be a fairly lengthy video, uh, you can see the ideal weapon mods on your assault rifle on the screen right now, and additionally, I've also left a screenshot of each of these for you to download in the description box down below, so you can maybe save these to your computer and then quickly look back at them while you're playing the game. However, for those that do want to know why I made certain choices and do want to know all the little things behind it, that is what I'm going to start with right now. I'm going to start the video, so without wasting any more time, let's begin. Before we actually take a look at each weapon archetype, I think it's a good idea to look at the new weapon mods, uh, that have been introduced in patch 1.4 and see how their stat rolls really work because I've seen quite some misconception about this, some misinformation. Um, every weapon mod always rolls with three attributes on it, with the exception of the muzzles, which can actually roll a fourth attribute as well, which is either reduced or increased threat. But uh, for the sake of this video, we're gonna ignore reduced and increased threat for now, as they don't actually do a whole lot for your character unless you want to play uh, a tank or something. Now, out of the three stat rolls that a mod has, one of those stat rolls will always be a higher roll statistic, and the two remaining ones, they will always be lower rolled. What I mean by that is that a scope, it can have 17.5% headshot damage, it can have 5.5% optimal range, and 2.5% critical hit chance. In this case, the headshot damage is obviously the higher rolled stat, uh, while the optimal range and the critical hit chance are the lower rolled ones. You can very easily predict what kind of high roll you will get on any given mod, because that never really changes per item. So, um, for example, improved iron sights will always have stability as their high roll. A VX1 scope will always have headshot damage. But then a T2 micro red dot sight will always come with more accuracy. How high these high rolls are though, that is pretty much random, but they will always fall within a certain range. Uh, much like the rolls on gear, where stats have a lowest possible roll and a highest possible roll, we all know that, right? You can have low armor and high armor. The two lower rolls that you get, they are completely random. You never really know what you're gonna get, but they also always fall within a certain range. Although, of course, because they are the lower rolled stats, that range is also much lower. Now, with so many different weapon mods and so many different weapon combinations of large and small mods and so many different weapons, which in turn require so many different bonuses to get the most out of them, things can get quite confusing. So what I'm going to do right now is talk about the assault rifles and go over what I think is important to keep in mind when playing with them. Assault rifles are weapons that generally have a higher rate of fire with a magazine size of around 30 bullets. They have an okay reload speed, good optimal range and a headshot damage bonus of 75% as a base. Uh, the weapons, they tend to be accurate and easy to handle uh, with the first couple of bullets that you fire. However, when holding down the trigger for a longer period of time, for, you know, a couple of seconds, that accuracy it drops fast and the weapon becomes very unstable as well. Now, when modding a weapon, there are always two things that you want to look out for. You want to either enhance the already existing good parts of a weapon, or you want to try to combat the bad parts about it. So with the assault rifles, we generally do not really want to focus on critical hit chance or critical hit damage because, you know, the assault rifles do not have either of those. Um, and the same goes for optimal range. It is hard to justify getting a lot of optimal range on a weapon um, when assault rifles, they become pretty inaccurate after just a few bullets. What we do want to look for when modding the assault rifle is, for example, headshot damage, because of course it already has that base 75%, which is quite high. 
but we also want to look out for things such as accuracy, stability and even magazine size. Now there are 19 different scopes in the game, however, 4 of those are 100% useless. Uh, the ones with uh, 10 behind their name. All these scopes uh, have, for some reason, a much lower, higher rolled stat than their non-10 labeled counterparts. And thus, you do not really want to get these ever. They uh, are quite a waste, so just ignore them. Pretend they don't exist. Of the 15 scopes that are left, there is one scope with headshot damage, there are 3 scopes with increased accuracy, and there are 3 scopes with increased stability. Now as I said, these are the main stats that we want to be looking for when we're going to mod an assault rifle. Now you would say that it is really up to the player to choose what he wants to spec in. However, I think that when you're looking for more accuracy or more stability, it is overall a pretty bad idea to get that from the weapon mod, simply because there are so many other sources of both accuracy and stability uh, that are much more efficient than uh, getting it from the mods. However, that same thing, it does not apply to raw headshot damage. If we look at the values here, you can see that you can get 15.5% to 18% headshot damage. You can get 11 to 13.5% stability and 14 to 17% accuracy. If we compare these to, for example, the weapon talents, it right away becomes quite obvious that headshot damage is the most scarce statistic among them. We have accurate, which increases accuracy by 25%. We have stable, which increases stability by 35%. And then we have brutal, which is only a 12% headshot damage increase. That same trend that also continues over when looking at the gear, you can get 30% accuracy from the Sentry 2 piece, you can get 20% stability from the Striker 2 piece, but to get headshot damage as a bonus, players are required to get a 3 piece, such as a Sentry 3 piece, which makes it a lot harder to integrate into any given build. For these reasons alone, I simply recommend that if you need or if you want more stability or accuracy on your weapon, you either get it from the weapon talents or from your gear set bonuses, because specking it the other way around, for example going for Brutal and then getting more accuracy on the scope, that is going to severely set you back in both departments. These things combined make the go-to scope for assault rifles the VX1 scope with headshot damage as a higher rolled stat. The lower rolled stats on a, on a weapon mod are actually a little bit of a trick of their own because they are always rolled the same amount on every single mod in the game. What I'm talking about is, is that the lower rolled stability always rolls between 2 and 2.5%. Two and the lower rolled crit damage always rolls between 3 and 4% and the lower rolled critical hit chance always sits between 2.5% and 3.5%. So in the case of the lower rolled stats, it's not so much a matter of what's the most useful for the weapons, but it's also a matter of how high these lower rolled stat rolls are compared to their higher rolled stat roll counterparts. Let me explain you what I'm talking about because this was quite a month full. Just take a look at this. A lower rolled crit chance amount that sits between, as I just said, 2.5% and 3.5%, but a higher rolled crit chance amount that sits between 7% and 8.5%. This means that if you get the highest values of both of them, then uh, the crit chance amount is only 2.28 times higher than the lower rolled crit chance amount, which you might say is, uh, is not that bad, you get 2.28 times the amount, but then if we take a look at, for example, critical hit damage, uh, the lower rolled stat there sits between 3% and 4%, and the higher rolled stat sits between 16 and 20%. As you can see, that is an increase of 5 times the amount. This tells us two things. First up is that it's probably better to take critical hit chances a lower roll, because we still get relatively quite a lot. But it also tells us that that same rule does not apply to critical hit damage. It's probably better to get critical hit damage as a higher rolled stat. Now, we can do this for critical hit chance and critical hit damage, but we can of course also do this for every single stat in the game. Uh, we can look at their low values and their high values and then look at the scaling to figure out what would give us the most value overall. And as you can see here, it's quite obvious that uh, rolling, for example, for a rate of fire as a lower rolled stat is very efficient, simply because you still get half of the amount of the higher rolled stat. You still get quite a lot of value. But then if we look at magazine size, that one you probably want to always roll as a higher rolled stat because you get about 10 times the amount of a lower rolled stat. See how this works? Now of course, a scope, it cannot roll reload speed, it cannot roll rate of fire, and it cannot roll magazine size. And considering that we also already took headshot damage as our higher rolled stat, we have these 5 stats remaining. If we were to just look at it by the numbers, it seems that critical hit chance and optimal range are the two best things to pick up here. 
and while critical hit chance is an absolute no-brainer simply because of the ridiculous scaling, um, I actually would not go for the optimal range here simply because, as I said earlier, the assault rifles struggle too much in the accuracy and the stability department to justify optimal range. For this reason, I suggest that you can spec into critical hit damage, as that will give you the best Anshi DPS possible. But I myself, I think I would personally even go for the stability, simply because it makes the weapon handle a bit better after firing a couple of bullets, which is going to allow me to aim for the heads on targets with more ease, and thus get more use out of all the headshot damage that I specced into the assault rifle. Now, all those things combined make this the ideal scope that I would probably go for uh, if I ever were to spec an assault rifle in a certain way. Moving on to the barrels, there are 11 different barrels in the game. Now, barrels can roll the exact same things as scope, so for all reasons previously explained, you want to go for headshot damage here as well, which only leaves you with two choices, and that is either the Omega Rifle Suppressor or the Omega Rifle Suppressor 10. Because, yes, uh, the 10 labeled suppressors, they actually are not bad, such as the scopes. And for previous reasons explained, you want to take this with the exact same stat rolls as the scopes. You want to get headshot damage, critical hit chance, and stability. Drips are very similar as well, although the stats that they can roll, they are a little bit different. For example, Grips cannot roll crit chance or headshot damage, but instead, they do have the ability to roll with reload speed. Looking at the scaling statistics once again, it seems that the 30% reload speed is a very strong pickup, especially considering that the only other places where you can get reload speed on the mods will be on the magazines, and as I just said, because magazine size have such a good scaling amount of more than 10 times the amount of the lower stat rolls, it is hard to not almost always take magazine size. So this is practically the only place on the mods where we want to get reload speed. Also, when looking at other sources of reload speed, such as the Predator's Mark with a 10%, or the Swift Talent, which gives you 25%, it is quite obvious that on paper, the 30% reload speed is the strongest pickup that you can get. However, Reload speed will not do anything for your burst potential, and I think that a lot of people watching this also play PvP, where burst is probably the most important thing. And also, assault rifles generally already have an okay reload speed, so there's not that much need to increase that even more. So I would say, because we are already specking into critical hit chance on the lower stat rolls, critical hit damage might be the best way to go here if you do not want to go for the reload speed. Then on the lower roll stats you want to go with more stability, and you want to go with more critical hit damage or more reload speed. Of course, that depends on what you took as a higher roll. Then last up, we get to the magazines, which is actually quite different from the rest of the items in terms of what you can roll. Just looking at the scaling of each of these items, it's, as I already said, an absolute no-brainer to pick up magazine size as the higher roll stat no matter what. We do not even have to talk about this, the scaling is just too ridiculous. For the lower two attributes, I would go once again with more critical hit chance. And as you can see here, Rate of Fire is actually also a very good pickup on the magazines as a lower world stat as well. You still get quite a lot if you look at it relatively. And that is gonna sum it up for the Assault Rifles. This is the best scope, the best muzzle, the best grip and the best magazine that you can possibly get. Now as I said at the start of the video, I am planning to cover the other weapon archetypes as well. But because Assault Rifles are probably going to be the meta game right now, I just wanted to look at the Assault Rifles alone. And of course, doing something like this for every other weapon archetype in the game and then put it into one video, well, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be a lot of work. So uh, I haven't gotten to that yet. I thought it would be better to put it in parts. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys later. Or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later.